day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm going to just spend a real quick moment with you to go over TCP, sequence numbers, uh, acknowledgements, uh, that kind of stuff. It's going to be really, really quick because I know this topic can be very overwhelming, so I don't want to get too much into it, but just a really quick note. So here's a, a stream of traffic coming from the server, see from 443 to the client. So it's downstream, download, towards the client, however you want to say it, doesn't matter. And you can see the sequence numbers here. And the sequence numbers are incrementing. So if you take the sequence number and you add the length, you'll get the next sequence number, and so on and so on and so on and so on. So over here it says TCP previous segment not captured. And I was wondering, is that one segment? Is that two segments? Like how many of these segments have we lost? And quite simply, we go to the sequence number here, 185907, subtract the previous sequence number, and we get 2600. Well, we can see the length here is 1300. So assuming, assuming, it's the same length as part of all the other packets in the same stream, then that would be two packets that were lost. Now, the only thing you got to keep in mind when you look at these numbers are the term relative uh, and raw or real sequence numbers. And what that means is the relative numbers, that's what these are, are going to be, I'm going to say, um, made for human consumption. It's not the real sequence number. If you looked inside the decode and you right clicked on the sequence number, you can actually change that uh, from relative, okay? And by doing that, you'll see the real sequence number. So if you wanted to correlate this back to a server, firewall, uh, any kind of log that might give the real sequence number, you would need to know that. But for the purposes of just going through a trace real quick, this is a, a real simple way to find out how many segments you've lost. So now that you know you've lost two segments, we can just add 1300 to one of these and then go search for that sequence number. Just be careful because it's a relative number. It's not the real one, which means that number may appear again later on in the trace. So it's just a, a good way to do that. If you go searching for packets, please make sure you have the same conversation or the com combination of the two TCP port numbers and or of course the IP number and that'll help validate how many packets you've lost. So in this case uh, we were losing packets from the server to the client and you know one, two, three, four, whatever may not be a big deal. When this happens all the time the conversation drops. So we have packet loss and the interesting thing about this this is packet loss and the server and the client are in the same building one floor apart. So it's not something you would expect to see. The client was wired, the server is obviously wired, and they're going through um, two edge switches and then down to the core, that's it. So it's not a very complicated layout. And now we've got at least a capture of what it looks like when we have the problem. So if we do find anything to change, we'll go back and compare apples and apples and see if the packet loss goes away. The other way to see if you have packet loss is to go to the command prompt. Uh, you can use the netstat NT, N -E -T -S -T -A -T, netstat dash s and you'll actually see the TCP retransmitted segments. The only reason why I don't cover that now is that only helps if you are sending data. If you're receiving data, that's not a good counter to look at. All right. So as you can see, I'm starting to get off topic as it is. So keep it short, simple, sweet. Have fun.